So we are basically a technology provider that uh, disrupts talent as we know it today by basically um, making ourselves independent from location and time. Um, but I'll get back to that later a little bit. I'd like to step uh, a little bit back now and have a look what uh, uh, we have seen in the last couple of years in terms of innovations and uh, disrupting of industries. Um, so uh, all of you might agree with me that we are today, as we've been in the 20th century, in a time where we see a lot of changes, where we see a lot of dramatical changes, not only to the society, but also to how we use technology. Um, in the industrial era, it was much about transportation. It was also already starting to be about communication. Um, but uh, today, based on the internet as a technology, it's also about collaboration and the way how we work today. So uh, I'd like to focus much more on how we as the population can leverage technology as an advantage to us, not so much about how we might actually be replaced by um, yeah, robots at some point. So this is not my topic. I'm rather uh, here to talk about how can we take advantage about technology by really um, enabling talent worldwide to become part of the thriving, of the thriving um, um, economies. So based on the internet, uh, we are seeing a rising of tools that enable us to basically uh, share um, information, share files, uh, but also basically base, uh, uh, build a lot of business around this. And um, um, we have uh, seen a lot of literature, both from the academic space, but also already from all sorts of uh, researchers that are looking how we are defining work today. Um, and um, here are two authors, and one of them is called Thomas Malone, uh, both of them researchers at the MIT in, uh, in the US um, who have evaluated back in 98 the term um, an e-lands economy, meaning like an electronic-based economy where workers come together and collaborate um, across continents and time zones based on the support of the internet. Um, you might have heard of uh, the book Remote, Office is Not Required, which is um, written by a team of entrepreneurs, again, uh, US Americans, who are evaluating the principle that um, work is no longer a place. So uh, what they are stressing it uh, is that uh, looking at building a company and team, uh, you might want to work with the best. And the best are not necessarily based at your town or your city or your region, but they might be somewhere else because the technology that you want to work with is not as common yet in your area. So uh, you might want to work with the specialists that have already the experience with working this kind of technology. I'm now talking, for example, about programmers or like uh, modern design methodologies, for example. So what they are um, uh, engaging us with is the principle that um, the office, the modern office today, is also a place of a lot of disruption, noise, and meetings that um, stress you and that basically um, prevent you to focus on your work. So they are basically also, they are really um, enabling us to, to look at other ideas and other principles, how you collaborate. So what they say is um, people should have a lot of freedom where they want to work, whether it is a co-working space, whether it's a home office, whether it is a remote office. Um, basically what they um, say is you want to focus on uh, uh, collaboration and the system and processes that work for you, but not necessarily everything has to take place at the same spot or location these days because we have the technology to make it happen. Um, now, taking the perspective of a, of a corporation and company, um, we can already uh, see uh, that a third of all the workforce in the US contents out of external specialists. These are, for example, contractors, agencies, temporary uh, employees, or freelancers. Basically, anyone who is a specialist that can provide value to the core team, uh, where the core team does not have the competence to cover this topic themselves internally. Uh, we have an estimation of a $300 billion market for this kind of labor, which we call contingent labor, which is basically everything all the tasks and all the like specialities that you cannot cover with your core team that you have to buy in or that you have to connect with or that you have to build a network around so that you can get access to this kind of talent. 
in some of the industries, uh, we already see much more external uh, contribution of the workforce. That is because many industries today already focus on their core competencies and not so much uh, try to do everything, but rather really focus on what they can do best and everything else they give out to the organiz uh, organization or individual that can provide this kind of contribution to the labor. And <clears throat> we have seen in uh, Fortune 100 companies since 2009 um, a 100% growth of those kind of outsourcing contracts. I'm not, uh, I'm not a big fan of the term outsourcing in general because it's, uh, it's, it's somewhat like considering uh, you give something core uh, out to someone else, but it is really about building the competency and building the network uh, competency as well to, to rather engage with this external individual who is providing the value to your work contribution. If, if you uh, want to compare like those kind of traditional businesses and hybrid businesses, as you can call them as a term, is um, not only with the big corporations, but already uh, also in the startup space, you can see that um, headquarters are dispersed, meaning that are spread across the world, wherever like the regional market is. So many of the relevant business models today are born globals from day one meaning that their potential customers are not necessarily around the corner, but completely somewhere else across the continents worldwide. So they have to go global from day one. So they would also look into building a team on a global scale. And uh, with many of those businesses also, you need a lot of different kind of specialists. And many of those specialists, you will probably not be able to attract to become a full-time employee because they are that specialized. They rather work for multiple employers or rather work for multiple different kind of projects because it's more interesting for them because they have the choice. They basically are very uh, valuable on the market so they rather look for a career where they have more freedom rather than sitting uh, in an office from nine to five where they have to do the same job every day. Um, other than that, uh, companies also look into building um, businesses across time zones meaning they want to uh, take advantage of having a distributed team across the globe so that they can serve their customers worldwide. And that's not about uh, uh, being uh, accessible to the customer to every like, time in terms of customer support, but also to, to basically um, yeah, move forward with my, uh, with, my, with my output, meaning that I, I don't want to only work maybe at, at one specific time zone, but I want to have a distributed team uh, that basically builds overnight certain modules, and if I wake up in the next morning, uh, my team at the local space can continue with the result that the other team has built. So those kind of ideas are spreading across all sizes of organizations today. Um, Online work or remote work itself is, is a principle that we've seen uh, since basically the start of the internet. Um, so again, here I'm not talking about outsourcing, but rather building teams across time zones and continents wherever the relevant employee is based, basically, and not so much having to focus on like moving everyone to the same spot, but rather leveraging technology that we have today to work together and to build the organization on top of that. And having a look on our platform, um, we have uh, people from all around the world uh, since we are originally a U.S. company, the U.S. still provides the majority of our um, e-lancers on the platform. But as you can see, um, everyone else, basically all the continents, are, are part of, of the mix of workers that we have here. And, and they are also uh, educated uh, just as on the regular labor market. So it's not like that people who follow this kind of new career are not going to university or doing a university degree but they rather make the decision at some point, I prefer this kind of career uh, rather than a corporate career uh, at an early point. And as I said already, um, work is not necessarily longer happening at one place today, but it's much more related to like building a, a virtual organization based on technology so that we can work together. Um, I'd like to present a, a case study to you uh, based on a non-technical founder of uh, a iPhone application. Um, he has founded his business originally in Copenhagen um, around 10 years ago as a, a single entrepreneur without having a team. So he had to look out basically for any kind of resource or, or special resource such as developers. 
and uh, basically found this on online work platforms and step by step built a team based on those online work platforms and still works with them today. So what he has built is an application that is for wine lovers and basically whenever they discover a wine they just take a picture of the cover and share it with the network of everyone else and then they can basically share experiences with this wine, rate it, learn where they can buy it and this uh, application has become the most uh, downloaded wine application worldwide in the Apple iTunes store um, and after uh, eight years he recently uh, raised a two million digit funding amount to move his company to the US now so he end of last year moved his core team to the US to disrupt this market now and he's a nice example of a like single entrepreneur becoming like a distributed team step by step rolling his product out and uh, learning also on the job on the go and without um, basically building a big team early on so this is a very modern approach of building an agile and lean organization by having a core team that is of course built, working on the product and, and, and working on the most important parts of the product and organization. But then he has a very modular approach by getting those resources at the point of time where he needs it. Uh, like for example, since he had to move in the US, I'm sure he had to now look into doing all sorts of US related campaigns in online marketing. So he had to find those specialists. But in three or six months from now, those campaigns are running and he probably uh, needs a different kind of specialist. So really get the resource on demand wherever he was, which enabled him to build a very scalable business and a very lean organization. And he did not have to burn a lot of money during this course of time. Yeah, just a quick uh, um, overview of what I'm presenting. I'm basically a technology platform that enables businesses and talent to connect and find each other and to do business together. Uh, we've been around since around 2006 and are right now in the process of merging with another big provider. So uh, we are at the end of March basically merging two of those big marketplaces together. Uh, again, uh, it's really about disrupting how uh, we work together and providing a virtual marketplace of labor. That's our goal and our vision. And we have clients both from the corporate space but also uh, we are much more coming from uh, small organizations, SMBs and startups. Um, but this kind of model is used by everyone these days. And my job, my personal role is to basically engage uh, people in the German market to educate everyone and um, to basically provide also people with best practices how they can take advantage of this kind of uh, market. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, since we have uh, still five minutes and I was just uh, about to, to show it to you, um, I would say let's open the floor for one or two comments, questions from the audience. Do you guys have any? Yeah, we have three comments here. Let's do it like that. We will take the three questions and then he will uh, respond. So we can have one more. Hello and good morning to all. Um, a very sh short question. My name is Matt uh, Fitzberger. Uh, I come from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, um, as f I can understand, your company is working in B2P, um, and I'm, uh, uh, I know that there are um, a lot of um, efforts going on now to make uh, a common European uh, stock exchange of uh, work. Um, are your uh, company, um, have, have it thought of uh, working with that? Or what uh, would you think are, uh, are the possibilities um, to build in uh, entrepreneurship um, uh, transnationally through this uh, new uh, European Union um, um, database? Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Aigul, and I'm from from Russia. I have a few questions. If, uh, so, first of all, in our new era of internet and um, 
when everybody is connected through email and Facebook, how is it going to work if we are also not even going to our workplace and staying at home, working disconnected from the society and not having any social contact? And we know that it's a basic need of every human being. So that's the first question. And also, one um, about self organization, because we know that people are usually very lazy. So, no, not very, but. <laughs> and it's sometimes very difficult to manage the time properly so that it can end up as a full-time job so you're starting at nine o'clock and sitting until 3 3 a.m. and you can't get your job done because you don't have the uh, time structure when your supervisor is sitting next behind your back it's a little bit different so that's basically it thank you uh, hi my name is Nathan uh, and my question is like um, as a country manager, country manager of Germany, um, what does Elans uh, do specifically for the German market? So, how is it different from the other countries? Thank you. All right. Let me start with the first question. It was related to, uh, to in what to what degree are we engaging with the uh, uh, European Union in terms of a political system to uh, provide uh, or connect with them and to engage with uh, labor changes over here? So um, being a privately held company, we really uh, focus on providing the framework that enables everyone based in Europe to work based on the legal regulations here. But we do not go further than that. So we are not looking into um, yeah, engaging with like lo local law or to try to change it, but we rather provide the technology uh, that the framework can be uh, accessible so that you can uh, enter your, your tax ID, that you can use uh, VIT deductions and those kind of things that you have focus on. But we do not go further than that. The second question was uh, related to um, uh, being a remote worker. How can we take care that uh, we are not getting too isolated? Um, so uh, my feeling is that people would not go that far or would not basically uh, do it that radical by really isolating themselves 24-7. But I would expect that it's a mix of in office days, that it's a mix of co-working work or that it is a mix of building like uh, small teams, local teams that sit together in a shared office. Like, uh, like we share everything today. We share also maybe an office with others. Um, but that doesn't mean it's my direct colleague of the same organization. Maybe it's a complete, maybe it's the same freelancer in a similar situation that wants to share an office with you or it's a friend. So I think it's going to be a mix of distribu distributing your work time among in office, shared office, co-working space, home office, whatever it's going to be, depending on your needs or your preferences. That's what I would expect. And that's actually, I do it myself since uh, I have this exact situation here in Germany. The second, your second question was, um, what was it again, related to? Uh, that it's not turn out that you work 24 hours a day because you can't get your job from one. Like you start at 9 o'clock, but you're doing it much longer because you sit at home and have it. Yeah. I, so I see that two-folded. Um, on the one side, I think um, being on your own, you are able to be more efficient because you're not interrupted as often by meetings, by phone calls, by whatever it is. But then, uh, of course, you have to schedule your day. You should look into like all sorts of um, productivity tools and efficiency tools and set your own schedule and framework. And also, of course, it's your job as a remote worker to set a maximum of time that you would want to work. But I would try to see it positively, that that enables you to basically distribute the time across the week where you prefer to work. So uh, for example, in the development software development space or also in a creative agency, we have a lot of people that not necessarily like to work between 9 and 5, but maybe start working in the afternoon and stop working at some time at night, because they find out it's the best time for them 
uh, where they are most productive. So they really try to yeah, find the best time of the day where they, are work, where they want to work. Yeah. The last question was related to what we are doing specifically in Germany. Um, so we are here at the very early stage of the market. So this kind of model is still um, not picked up as much as we, for example, would see it in the UK, Australia, or in the US. So my job is mostly to educate the market about the possibilities um, and also to do uh, case studies about those kind of hybrid teams, hybrid organizations, and educate everyone that it's something that we've seen since many, many centuries, not only from government organizations, but also big corporates. Everyone is using this kind of model. And why not the SMB should use it? So it's really about teaching, educating everyone to take advantage of this and mostly provide the case that um, you want to find your talent everywhere they are. So um, that's something which helps to basically uh, find more usage of this model because everyone probably agrees that the best coworker for a specific task not necessarily is my neighbor, but most likely somewhere else that is based completely somewhere else. And one Okay. Good morning. My name is Yulia. I'm from Ukraine. Uh, and I was wondering when you were talking about Alliance as a platform that unites people, at the meantime, I guess I might assume that people have to compete for jobs, actually to fight for jobs, to hunt for jobs. But that makes me thinking, do they have to devalue their work? I mean, to decrease the price for their work in order to be hired? Thank you. That's a very good point, and it's a common platform. It's a common problem that we see on any marketplace, on any of those kind of platforms, whether it is Airbnb for shared accommodation, whether it is Elance for for work. Uh, so this kind of problem is part of the system, and it's a big task for us to overcome it. And uh, I agree that becoming uh, a basically highly booked worker there, that you have to start low. You probably have to start with easy tasks and you have to start at the lower end also of your hourly rate. And then slowly, step by step, you have to build up your profile, gather ratings, build up your uh, portfolio of projects because people also would evaluate, evaluate you based on, the, on, on your project experience and also based on the ratings that you got. So this is something you have to build, yes. So it's something like an, a CV that you, have to, that you have to build virtually on those kind of marketplaces so that people consider you as a relevant worker for this task, yes. So that's something we have to overcome. And of course, it's, yeah, it's a uh, difficult task to make this a fair system. And uh, it's nothing we can do on our own. So we talk to external experts also that do research in this topic so that we can get better and better here. <laughs> 